Hello there, so this is another quick video on how to use alarms and where they fit in our diagnostic process. Um, one feature of alarms is that we could actually um, use them if we're on a road test for instance um, to quickly save multiple captures um, as we're on the road test and if we find an event uh, we can save all the buffers but instead of having to then save the file, rename it and edit everything in that way we can actually just set up a default location with a test uh, with a file name and then actually keep adding on top of it sequentially so it'll go up with one, two, three, four, and five, and etc. Um, there is some limitations to this, but we'll talk through that as we go. So for now, at the moment, I've got a uh, signal generated um, camshaft sensor. Um, so we can just click that and we can watch that run across the screen. Now, one thing to do to note with um, using alarms is that if we set the set the situation up to capture all buffers, um, what it will do is it will just keep capturing until it fills up your hard drive. So if we're going to use this in this way, you want to set up uh, a long time base, which we typically do if we were going on a road test anyway, so we can go back in and zoom afterwards. So if we said maybe two seconds per division, so then we should get this scrolling across the screen. Obviously, depending on the number of channels you want, keep an eye on your sample rate. If it's a little bit too low, then up that to say 10 million samples. And obviously, we can note we've now got 500 kilo samples a second. This will just help with the detail when you zoom back in if you are looking for glitches. Now, the next thing to set up the alarm, we're going to go to Tools, Alarms. Now, here we've got the event. So this is on Capture. So what this will do is as soon as it reaches the end of this buffer, it's actually going to see that as a captured event. So and then it will save the file. So we could just leave this to run and just keep capturing and keep capturing as we're driving. So actually we could just leave it and just let it do its thing. Um, the other way to do it is, like I said, if we have a really long time base, um, we can actually just start and stop the scope using the spacebar. Um, and then actually it will automatically save the file and then we could start the scope up again and do the same thing. So at the moment we've got on capture. So if we click the drop down, we obviously have the other different options. You may have seen these mask fail option used in some of our other um, uh, learning on our forum. Um, so if we click the capture, now obviously highlight that and tick it. So now this is active, this alarm is now active. But what we want to do is add an alarm action in. So at the moment we've got beep, that's just an audio, um, an audio version visualization of what's going on and um, so you can hear a beep you'll, you'll hear it in a second so we'll just go through so what we want to do is save all buffers or save current buffer now typically on capture it will just actually save the current buffer anyway so either of these two would, would, would be fine so we're just going to go for save all buffers and it just covers all bases now file this is where we're actually going to select the file location to where everything is going to be saved so I've already set up a folder, but if we just skip back one, so I've got on my desktop, I've got desktop and master free roads there. So I'm just going to use that folder. Now down here, we're going to actually rename our file name. So this will be what is the, the title of each one as we, um, as we save them. So if we just call that say Mazda road test, and just leave it as that. And then what we'll do is we'll go back in after we've done some captures. So that's where everything's gonna be saved. Now, make sure that all of these are ticked. Just double check that that's ticked as capture. We're gonna hit apply and we're gonna hit okay. So now if we run our scope and we are out driving for instance, and even in this first one, we may Find that we've actually seen the event take place we can stop we see the hear the beep and then we see the little dialog box flash up and what we can do now is actually just restart do the same thing again maybe we see it at this point so again if we either hit the space bar or hit the stop button again we've now saved another file now if I drop the time base down a little bit um, say to one second per division. Now if we just watch this scroll across the screen and don't stop the scope, we see that we should actually get another file saved. 
for the beep and that's where we save the save the file. That's something to be mindful of if you're going to use this technique using slightly shorter time basis to make sure you go for go bigger rather than smaller if you're going to use this technique. So let's stop the scope now and then we're going to get one more. So now if I go back to this folder, so I'm going to go to open, we can now see that we've got the different files named and obviously two, three, four and five underneath. Another little tip um, here is if we say we want to open number four and obviously do any of the measurements or any analysis that we'd like to do, obviously zooming in. Um, if we now actually use the page up and down buttons, we can actually just skip through that folder going up and down the files that we've captured. So it might be that this is the one that we're actually interested in. So just another useful tip there in how to use um, alarms and um, how to do an auto-save function. Okay, I hope that helps and uh, thanks again for your support. Take care all, bye. Hi there, so just another quick tip here actually, going on with our alarms and um, saving, saving automatically, um, is using a trigger actually, but like a trigger that's never met. So you know how I said before, try and use a, a longer time base and to, to prevent the actual buffer being full and then automatically saving a file. If we were to use the same idea, but actually put a trigger in a, in a position which is never met, but on the far right hand side of the screen, we're never actually going to meet that trigger and therefore we'll just collect data on the screen and it will just keep scrolling across. At that point, if we do ever come across the issue, we can stop the scope and a file will automatically be generated and saved and then we can carry on um, if we need to capture any further. So let's just talk how we're going to go through that. So again, so I've still got this uh, camshaft signal generated uh, cap, uh, waveform on the screen. So we're going to take our time base up. Now, we do need to be in streaming mode for this. So this is when the, the capture is actually, you can see it start on the left and then move across the right. Um, anything below 200 milliseconds is in block mode. So this is when we actually see the trace all of it on the screen at one point. So we do want to be in streaming. Now, if I add a trigger, so we're going to go for a repeat trigger in this instance. Now at the moment, you can see it's at the bottom and it's not being captured, but in order to, not being triggered, sorry, um, in order to prevent that even further, go above, just click and drag and move the trigger way out of the, the reach of the, the signal that's on the screen. And you'll see now that actually the buffer count isn't going up. We are still seeing data on the screen, but obviously the trigger isn't being met, so we're not gonna skip to the next buffer. To do that, quickly at the bottom here on the trigger toolbar, you could just set that at 100% and then select your voltage range. Now this is a just under a two volt signal out of our signal generator. So plus three volts, it's never gonna meet it. We just stop the scope for a second and we're just gonna go back in and set up our alarm again in the same way that we did before. So it's gonna be on capture, I'm gonna make sure that that's ticked. We're gonna add in an event, which is going to be uh, save all buffers. So here we're gonna obviously select our um, new file name it has to be different from the original, otherwise it will just overwrite. So we're just going to call this something different, maybe Mazda Road Test, I don't know, take two or something like that. Um, click Save and click OK. Obviously click Apply and then OK again. So now we're on a much shorter time base. Our triggers over here all the way out the way, so never going to be met. If we start the scope, should just be able to continue in capturing data until maybe we want to stop. You can hear it stop the scope, save the file. And again, we can start it up again. Again, begin capturing data as before, and then only ever stop it when we need to. Okay, so that's just another little quick tip on how to use the trigger, um, not necessarily for what is it, for what it was intended for, but actually to help um, with, especially with this alarm feature and capturing data whilst, um, whilst you're on the go.
Right, I hope this helps. Okay, bye.